Hey, this is Marvel and Brown with In A Word Business Services, and today I am uh, going to take a second look at our hobbies, skills, and interest inventory. So today we're going to look at it from a different perspective. Now, in the previous video, we talked about how to complete this inventory, and we went through the process of looking at, you know, your areas of interest. We looked at your skills, some of the skills that you may have obtained over the years, and we answered some other very important questions. And then at the end, we, um, you know, kind of came up with a short paragraph that described the kind of online business that we want to create. And so if you haven't taken the inventory, I invite you to go back to that previous video, and I'll put a link to it below this video so that you can go back and complete the inventory and then come back to this, um, this video. Now, I think this video is really gonna have a lot more uh, meaning to you once you've gone through that series of five questions. So now, um, we have identified in the previous um, exercise, we identified three areas that interest you the most. So this is about you, this is about building a business that interests you, that ties into some of the things that you've been involved in, some of the skills that you've obtained, some of the hobbies that maybe you've pursued in the past, and just some of your interests, the things that you are interested in either um, building on or either you know pursuing in the future. So what I did was I took you know three areas three random areas, and we're going to focus on those three areas. And I'm gonna help you to narrow down your focus. You know, we're gonna work on finding your niche. So you may have heard that term before. If you haven't, we're going to, um, we're gonna identify what a niche is and how it can help you when you are building your business. So let me just get over to my presentation. And, um, and this is where, you know, we're going to talk about your niche and how it works to help you uh, build an online business. So, what is a niche? Now, I found two definitions that I think are really um, applicable to what we're going to be talking about. The first definition is a niche is a specialized segment of the market for a particular kind of product or service. And the second definition is um, a niche is product, service, or interest that appeals to a small, specialized section of the population. So when you look at these two definitions, they have certain things in common. And one of them is um, that both of them talk about a small, uh, specialized section of the population. And that's really what I want you to take away from this. A niche helps you to identify the population or the segment of the population that you want to gear your business to. So a niche is really a way that you can categorize your business. You can um, narrow it down so that you only work with certain people. So your products, your services, your interests, all the things that go into making your business are not necessarily going to appeal to everyone. We buy things in cycles. You know, some of us are buying certain things on a regular basis, but you know, the things that we need to run our homes, we're gonna buy those items on a regular basis. The things that help us get to and from where we need to go, of course, we're gonna be buying those kinds of things on a regular basis. There's some things that we buy during the summer months, some things that we buy during the winter months. And so there are a lot of different categories of things that we buy. We're all consumers of something. Um, and then there are things that we buy on an as needed basis. And so what you have to do as a business person is look at your products and your services and consider, you know, when is your ideal customer going to be buying this product? You know, what does your product or service do to help your ideal customer? All of those things go into really zeroing in on the audience that you want to build for your business. So that kind of gives you an idea of what a niche is. Now, why is it important? 
Um, and we talked about, you know, the fact that having a niche brings focus. Everyone is not your customer. And that is one of the big mistakes that I see a lot of new entrepreneurs make. They think that everyone is going, and I've done this. I did this when I started my business. I thought everybody that I knew would love my product and be interested in buying it. It was perfect for me. I thought it would be perfect for everyone. Boy, was I mistaken. And so once I kind of let go of this idea that everyone was my customer and that I could sell this product to everybody, once I changed my focus to finding my ideal customer and to really narrowing down my audience to only work with people who were interested in my product or service, that was really when the light bulb moment came. So you want focus in your business. You don't want to be out there you know, just um, advertising to everyone because everyone is not interested. I'll give you a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So today, you know, you're a homeowner, you know, and you're in your home and everything's just running well. You're humming along, you know, life is good, right? And then uh, maybe a week later, you are um, in your kitchen and you're cooking and then you, you know, turn on the faucet and all of a sudden there's tons of water just spewing into your ceiling and water is just everywhere, right? So before when everything was humming along, did you need a plumber at that point? Of course not. Everything was working well, but now that you have water, you know, flying everywhere and everything is getting wet, you're getting wet, your ceiling is getting wet. And you're thinking, how fast can I get a plumber to my house? So that's how things change. You know, today, your ideal customer may be looking for your product or service. Um, and they may not be looking for your product or service. They may not even know that they need your product or service. But something may happen. Something changes. The focus changes. And they realize that, you know what, I need... Um, you know, this product and this service. And so that's why it's very important for you to be consistent in your marketing because you never know when your ideal customer is going to need your product or your service. You want to be that person who is top of mind uh, when your ideal customer is, you know, finding solutions. And so, you know, having a niche really helps you to do that. And we're going to, it's going to become more apparent to you as we go through um, these exercises. But, you know, the main thing that you want when you have a niche, it really helps you to zero in on your ideal customer and how you can help them. Now, the, the other thing that having a niche or finding your niche does, it, it is it helps you to craft the right message. So you want your advertising to go to the right people. You don't want to waste your money or your time or your resources advertising to the wrong people. You know, and I've done another, I did a previous video on finding your niche and I kind of went through an exercise. And the thing that I found over the years is that a lot of online, new online marketers, um, until they kind of make this transition, they spend a lot of time talking to the wrong people. You know, they're getting their advertising message in front of the wrong people. And so you want to make that shift so that you are, you know, putting that message out in front of the right people. And then in turn, that's going to help you to get results in your business a lot faster. And so this is pretty much what we want to do. Now, uh, the next thing that I want to do is take you over to Google. And we're going to just look at and as you can see, I've already kind of looked at some of the uh, various areas. Uh, one of the things that I forgot to do, let me just go back to my presentation. These are the three areas that I have selected. So if we go back to the skills inventory, um, one of the three areas is one is photography, one is fashion, and one is sports and fitness. So you may have selected um, a different set of interests, and that's okay. I use these three um, areas, photography, fashion, and styling, as well as sports and fitness as an example. And you're gonna go through the same process that I'm getting ready to take you through 
when it comes to uh, finding your niche. So you're gonna take those interests that you identified on the skills inventory, and you're gonna just put them into these, um, these little blocks. And so I put pho uh, photography as the first one, so that's what we're going to look at on Google. So instead of, we're gonna get to fashion in a moment, but I wanna just kinda take these in order. So we're gonna go to, um, we're gonna search for the best photography niches. So when you're thinking about, you know, your niche, what you wanna do is you want to kinda of use a search like this. So you wanna say maybe the best uh, photography or sports or fashion or finance, whatever you came up with on this inventory, you wanna plug that word into your search. And so in this case, we're using the best photography niches. Now this is going to give you, hopefully, it doesn't happen in every case, but in most cases, you know, when you put this information into Google, it'll give you a list of some of the niches that you can look at. This is a great starting point because photography is a very broad category. And so we wanna narrow down our focus as much as possible. So we're gonna narrow it down by saying, you know, that maybe we want to specialize in portrait photography, or maybe we want to specialize, maybe our niche is going to be landscape photography. Now, a lot of people who travel a lot will specialize in landscape photography because, you know, they're traveling all over the world. They take pictures of various landmarks, various uh, scenes. And so it's very easy for them to get access. If you live in a part of the country where there's a lot of scenery, a lot of beautiful uh, landscapes, then this would be a good fit for you. Street photography. You know, photojournalism is a very popular um, niche. Um, Headshot photography. So maybe you want to work in a studio. Maybe you want to be hands-on with your um, ideal customers and do, you know, help people do uh, better headshot photography, still life photography, food photography. So maybe you are someone, um, when you think about the inventory, maybe you're someone who has identified cooking as one of your primary interests. Maybe you love cooking and photography. And so why not combine that, you know, with um, combine those two areas into an online business. And there again, we have travel and photography. So maybe if you're someone who loves travel and you are good with your uh, camera, you can combine those interests into and build, you know, an online business based on those interests. So then if you scroll down a little further, you know, here's some additional niches, fine art photography, photojournalism, wedding and special event photography, portraiture, pet photography, uh, special occasion, non-corporate event photography, um, and additional niche photography fields. So, you know, when you go through your search, I want you to just kind of look at not only the list, but there's some articles here that would probably also give you some additional information about, um, you know, a niche that you might be interested in. So get as much information as you can uh, regarding various niches in your broad area. So when we looked at the skills inventory, those were all pretty broad areas. So you want to narrow down um, those areas into a specific area that you um, would be happy um, pursuing. So now let's look at uh, sports and fitness, I think is the next niche. So we're going to look at, I'm going to start with fitness, the best fitness niches, and let's look at what comes up. So here we have another list. Uh, weight loss. Now, a lot of people who are into fitness, some people are into fitness to lose weight. Other people are into fitness to, um, you know, carve out a physique or to, you know, make their bodies look in a certain way. And so 
you know, weight loss is one area that you could really focus on. Um, muscle building or muscle toning or whatever. Actually, I think it's, yeah, here's the area down here. So I won't get ahead of myself. So let's go through these. Uh, weight loss, goal-based training, uh, the health of a particular body part. So maybe there's, you know, heart health or some kind of benefit, you know, to fitness that you might want to focus on. And that could be your niche. Um, supplements and consumables. Now supplements, when it comes to health and wellness, supplements are a very big uh, market. And you can narrow down, even under the area of supplements, you can narrow your focus even more. But supplements, um, especially when it comes to weight loss, there are different types of supplements. There are also things that help you to, you know, chisel out, you know, a physique. Um, so supplements are also a very good area that you could go into. Fitness equipment. Now, fitness equipment is really becoming more popular as we, you know, we went into the pandemic, people were at home more. And it kind of opened up this new market or this new opportunity because people were going out buying fitness equipment, you know, even something as simple as resistance bands, you know, something that you could use to get that uh, workout from home and um, utilizing, you know, some of these uh, streaming services to, you know, work out from home and get results from home. Um, you can specialize in equipment, you can specialize in high-end equipment, you know, kind of middle-of-the-road equipment, lower-end equipment, and really help people when it comes to, you know, uh, reaching their fitness goals. And then here's some other examples of successful targeted health and fitness niches. So weight loss for women. Now that really drills down. So you take weight loss and you drill it down even further weight loss for women or weight loss for men, uh, muscle building for men. And then you also have muscle building for women, healthy eating for growing teenagers. And really you could say healthy eating and then fill in the blank, whether it's healthy eating for people over 50 or healthy eating for teenagers or healthy eating for women, or, you know, you can really narrow that down um, into a lot of different areas. Functional movement training and then nutrition plans for better digestion. There are also, you know, things that foods that you can avoid if you want to, um, you know, uh, eliminate or reduce the number of free radicals that you're exposed to, or eating to uh, reduce the amount of inflammation in your body. You know, inflammation has been tied to a lot of different diseases. And so there are a lot of different niches that you can specialize in under uh, the fitness niche. Now let's look at sports. So the best, and all you have to do is just, you know, plug in your particular interest. So now we're looking at the best sports niches. And, you know, if you want to elaborate on this search, you can even say, uh, the best sports niches for 2021. And that will hopefully give you a list of things that are more, uh, recent. But here are some of the best sports niches. Now, this is for affiliate marketers. We haven't started talking about affiliate marketing yet, but you know, if you're an affiliate or if you are interested in becoming an affiliate, here's some of the best sports niches. Now, to me, these are great niches in general, whether you're an affiliate or whether you're not, um, but let's go through it. So we have golf, we have sports news, sports streaming sites, outdoor sports, indoor sports, team sports, water sports, tennis, etc. Now here is another site that gives you the 15 most profitable niches. Um, and this is just in general. It looks like this is not necessarily related to sports. So we're not going to look at that. Uh, 10 niche sports you know nothing about. Um, and they it looks like they're listing some of these here. So Octopush, never heard of it. Fencing, Frisbee, uh, Court Ball, Rally Cross, Synchronized Swimming, Shinti, never heard of that. Uh, drag Racing. So these are niche sports. These are things that you could specialize in. Um, 100 micro niche ideas to create your own sports 
blog. So I'm going to take a look at that. I would really like to see what they've come up with. So let's see. Now you may look at some of these and it may be, um, you know, maybe what you're looking for and it may not be, but here it looks like they have narrowed down some niches. So uh, target archery, competitive archery, bow and equipment reviews, bow safety, bow hunting, youth archery. These are some really narrowed down uh, niches under the umbrella of archery. Now archery falls under sports. You know, so you've started with that broad category of sports, you've narrowed it down to archery, and then these are some even more narrow uh, areas that you can look at. Baseball, you know, under, you know, the sports category, we have baseball. And then here's some of the micro niche ideas that you can use to start a business, whether it's youth baseball skills and drills, baseball coaching techniques, um, you can start a blog about baseball gloves and their histories, general major league baseball blog, um, and just lots of different areas here. Um, basketball, and there again, you know, a general NBA blog, basketball sneakers blog, throwback jersey blog, uh, basketball drills. So if you're into basketball, this might be some areas that you might want to look at. Uh, boxing. And I'm not going to go into detail about all of these, but you can see here they have lots of ideas. So I'm going to put this, this will be um, a site that I will put below this video so that you can go back and take a look at it. So just one moment. Okay, so this is an area, this is a post that I think would really be beneficial to anyone who is looking to um to get into some kind of sports uh related uh business okay so now we've done sports let's look at fashion so these are you know just the areas that we talked about in the um skills inventory okay so best fashion niche niches uh finding your fashion brand niche in seven easy steps um, now this, now this is really kind of a good idea or a good um, thing to look at. So when I put in best fashion niches, it really didn't give me a list like it did with the other niches that we talked about. But what it did was it kind of gave me a list of articles. And then if you look at the related searches here at the bottom, this may also be um, some areas that you might look at. For example, Instead of putting in the best fashion niches, you might look at women's fashion niches or fashion niches 2021, uh, fashion, see, niche fashion designers. Um, but I'm going to, let's see, let's look at some of these. Actually, I've looked at this before and this is a really good, um, I'm going to put this down underneath this video as well as a source for you because it gives you um, some really good ideas when it comes to um, some of the, the areas that you might want to think about. So 126 fashion blog ideas. So look at this, handbags, so luxury handbags, contemporary handbags, sale handbags. They have the shoes category, jewelry and accessories, lingerie, hats, eyewear, workwear, luxury fashion, uh, maternity workwear, plus size workwear, corporate men's workwear, uh, mass market fashion, and the list goes on. So this really gives you a lot of different things that you can look at if you're interested in fashion. Now this also says, let's see, um, education, photography, and fashion roundup. You might want to Let's look at photography, roundup of the best blogging cameras. Interesting. Okay, so this is really, I think, a good resource if you're interested in finding um, information on fashion, you know, doing that research. So I'll put this below um, the video as well so that you can come back to it. But the thing that you want to do is you want to put in your search, and let me just go back down here to the bottom. We'll put 
women's fashion niches as um, a search. So women's fashion niches. And let's see what, what comes up there. Finding your, okay, so, yeah, this is what I meant, okay. So it still didn't give me a list, but you know, these are some areas that you might wanna think about um, when you are searching for ideas for your fashion uh, niche. Okay, so I think you kind of get the idea. You know, when it comes to researching your niche, I would really recommend taking those interests that you um, identified in the inventory and just doing some research to figure out, you know, the best areas that you can focus on. And as I said before, the more you focus on your niche and reaching out to those people, for example, if you're um, into fashion, then, you know, when you reach out to people who are interested in fashion, you are going to, um, you're going to be talking to people who are um, already, you know, they're already sold. That All you need to do is just provide them with, um, with information that can help them make a buying decision. So there's no arm twisting about fashion. There's no, you know, you're, when you're niching down, you're going to be able to craft messages that will speak to people who are interested in fashion. So if you're not interested in fashion, you're not even gonna be looking at, you know, your particular um, advertising messages, only the people who want and need what you are providing are going to be responsive. And hopefully that makes sense. And that applies to any of these areas, whether it's photography, sports and fitness, or any of the other areas that we identified in the inventory. So what I want you to do is just kind of go through and you know pick out some niche ideas that you know will help you um, narrow down your focus and and give your blog or give your website or give your business focus. You know, bring things into focus and realize if you don't take anything else away from this training, um, realize that everyone is not your customer. And so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close out. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you on the next video. Have a great day, bye-bye.